Talking Music with Big Andy. On this week's show, Penny Billionaires are talking music with me, Big Andy. Hello and welcome to the podcast. Um, I have with me... Uh, Greg Jacks and Evan Berg, who make up uh, Penny Billionaires from Phoenix, Arizona. Hi, guys. How are you doing? How you doing? Learning very good. Thank you. Good, good, good. Now, um, I was confused. Oh, I wasn't sure because I, I found somewhere it said, it said that you play electronic hard rock, and then somewhere else it said that you play electronic dance metal. Is there a difference between those two? And if so, what do you, which one do you actually play? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, it started off pretty much as like we would call it dance metal. Um, it, cause it's because when we first started making this music, it was, um, I, I always wanted to do hard rock, but it was like, okay, how do you make it sound different than everything else? Yeah. And I was like, I used to do, um, used to make like pop productions and um, electronic dance uh, productions uh, in my studio so I figured what if I just combine the two and you know it kind of turned in like to this industrial sound but I was like but it was using more modern you know concepts so it's like it's like EDM but instead of you know electronic dance music I was like yeah. electronic dance metal like wh whatever <laughs> and um the the songwriting though over time um as you're going to hear in the new single coming out is uh is transferring over it's showing uh, more sides of, of the band so we're gonna have it's i would say it's it's electronic hard rock okay now yeah for sure <laughs> so how did the two of you sort of come together well uh, we, uh like we made it you want to go or want me to go? <laughs> no 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 i'm 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 <laughs> delighted i'm i'm listening yeah. and, I, and i'm yeah. drinking my coffee and i love what i hear yeah. So um, please keep, well, we going. Met at, uh, keep going. Okay. All right. Well, we, we met at a show about like five years ago. I think it was about five, five maybe six years ago actually. And uh, he was playing with another band um, that I knew, and she asked me to open for her with my band that I was playing with at the time. It was a solo project. I was just Evan Berg, and uh, I had some pop rock originals I was doing at the time, and I opened up for him, and he really liked what I was doing. He's like, "Wow, that's I." Like you sound really good. Like I think I like, really would love to work with you sometime. It'd be great. And then we connected on Facebook, and then we didn't talk for like a year. <laughs> I think it was about a year. And then I I was I always always hiring freelance uh, musicians, and I was sick of like not having people who were dedicated. So I made a post on Facebook of looking for someone who wants to be dedicated to drum. And Greg was like, I'm the best drummer in town. I'm going to be there. I'm the guy. Get me. And that's exactly what he pretty much said. And, uh, I was like, all right, sure. No, uh, I, the, the, I, I, I said something slightly different. That's different. I said, well, this, this is what I said, because I'm very cocky and pretentious at times. So I said, Evan, are you looking for a drummer? There's only one drummer in town. All the others are clowns. So if you want to play serious music, then hit me up. Those were, this is the way I put it together. That wasn't like, oh yeah, get me, oh yeah, I want to, no, I was like, no. That's I'm the best, <laughs> if you want to play with the best, let's meet. And funny thing, Andy, yeah. I guess I was so, I mean, so Evan was like, okay, sure, you know, like, and then we never connected. And three months later, he reached back out, he's like, do you still want to meet? And I'm like, yeah, sure, no yeah, problem. And it then, took like three months after that. <laughs> Even then, though I'm, I'm, you know, tired, I do remember that stuff. Yeah, so, but, yes. but it's funny because when he came over, it was like love at first sight. Like we, it was, it oh, was, yeah. it was instant. And then we, I don't, we, we didn't stop. It was great. No, that was fun. That that's oh, 
Yeah, sorry. That is 100% <laughs> true. Like the minute, and that's funny because, go ahead, Andy. No, I was, I was going to say that the thing was that the, you got together around 2020. Uh, before that. Yeah. Before that. Like it was, to be honest with you, I believe it was even maybe even 20, 2017, I think, Andy. Yeah. It oh, must right. have been yeah. 2017, if not 2016 by now. Yeah, it's been a while now. It's, it's been a while. We said five, but it's probably. The thing is, you kind of got, got together and started doing stuff mm. just before the whole world went into lockdown. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so uh, for penny billionaires, this is uh, when we decided it's to It's more the absurd. Yeah, wait, it's more absurd, Andy. Like, the, it's funny, actually. So we met in 2017, decided to work together. That was super fun. We love, you know, working together, et cetera, et cetera. And then the original project was put on hold, indefinite hold. And, and, then, and then there was this one song, Breakdown, and we had a shot with a label, and then we signed a deal, and then we unsigned the deal. <laughs> you know, it was like, yeah. it was crazy. And it was yeah, like a total, a total full start, you know, like, wait, what? And, yeah. then, and then we're like, okay, well, you know, so we signed a deal with the label. And then, as I said, maybe three, four, five months later, we realized that as nice as they are, because they were nice people, they didn't give us trouble to exit the deal, they were not doing what they were doing. So I told them and I said, what's the point of signing to a label that doesn't do the job, nor has the mean to do what they said they would be doing. So we left it there sort of like a little bit, uh, you know, disappointed. You know what I mean when you're like, yeah, yeah. Oh, you're excited. You know, you get a deal, Evan. That was Evan's first deal. You're like, yeah. And then two months later, it's like, no, like our oh, four months, nothing. So we left it there. We kept doing our uh, project together, our uh, cover project and stuff, but we left the original to the side. Evan kept writing his pop music. I rejoined my uh, big band in Europe. And then we started, I started going to Europe to, you know, prepare a 20 anniversary tour. Evan was working on his pop project and then pandemic yeah. hit. And we found ourselves together, as, you know, in Phoenix. And we said, why don't we do it? So we literally started the project really during the pandemic. It wasn't before. It was like at the start of the pandemic, we're like, oh, that should be a good idea to start a project, right? <laughs> so that, yeah. that yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sounds like yeah. the right time, right? <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I mean, it, it, it does seem like a bit of an odd time to start everything up just as, everything, as the, the world's going into lockdown, I must admit. Um, but, you, you, I mean, you get, I'm mean, assuming it gave you time to do some writing and recording of stuff and that sort of thing, which is, a, which is not a bad thing. No, no, I definitely had downtime for a good half a year, at least. So that was, that was nice uh, and not nice at the same time, but... You know, it definitely, it definitely gave a lot of, uh, there's a lot of inspiration too, you know, when you're talking, when everyone's talking about the end of the world, it's yeah. kind of a pretty, pretty cool for a metal band, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I must admit, I mean, the, the thing was, I mean, your, the, the first thing I listened to, which is what I read, it's the, it was your first kind of thing that you put out there was Awoken. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's yeah, and we're right in there. <laughs> I, I, I really like that. I must, I must say, I really. I mean, I like what you do because I'm, I like the whole uh, crossing over of genres thing. I'm not really big on the whole genre thing. I never have been, but I like the idea of of taking elements from different music and putting it together and and seeing what you can come up with. And I think you guys do it really well. No, oh, thank you. It, it works. Thanks, really, Andy. Really well. Um... Serene is 
I mean, was there any particular uh, influences or anything that you had when you were coming together to do this? Because to be honest, there aren't that many people out there doing the same sort of thing as you're doing. So I'm just wondering what your musical influences were and, and, and uh, how you kind of mashed them together. Well, I just if I may, I, I'm, yeah. I was, I'm gonna, I, I'm, I was gonna let you answer that. I just want to say, I love hearing this. This is so cool that, even for somebody that critics music, you know, that listen to a lot of different music, you yeah, still, yeah. You, to hear like, yeah, you guys are doing something different from everybody else. To me, it's so pleasing to hear that because this is what we're trying to do. You know, reinventing the wheel is very hard in music. Everybody has done, yeah. you know, it's, it's, and then when you want to go, out there, then you go too out there. And I'm very pleased with that. So I'm going to let Evan uh, answer this question. But I, I just wanted to share that with you. I'm mm -hmm. very touched by those words. And this is personally, this is why I try so hard every morning to do something new with Penny Billionaires and why Evan have teamed up. So Evan, I'll let you answer that. Yeah, yeah. So going back with like the influences, I actually, I grew up, um, listen like a total metalhead i was playing guitar at 10 years old and i was all into the the big you know shredding metalheads from the 80s um from like you know with like metallica and, and megadeth and yeah. you know um and even more like on the pop side like with van halen and everything else in between and i always try to that was just the start of it. I always wanted to be in a hard rock band, though. I mean, I was listening to current stuff at the time, like Avenged Sevenfold, um, you know, Five Finger Death Punch, Godsmack, um, and everything else in between. I'm just naming off big names. But that would, uh, that was, I was probably my, my life for my first three, four years of playing guitar and music. And then I decided to branch out. I didn't even think I was going to be a singer. So I figured, okay maybe i'll let me try singing in my band that i had my my garage band i had that we used to play at uh halftime basketball games and i was in middle school and i was like well we need a singer so once i started to sing i was like okay well let me try something i was i was experimenting with everything and i was a terrible singer i was terrible <laughs> wait didn't you do choir is it before yeah, choir or after choir. choir i was in choir my whole life but and i was a, a terrible choir. singer in choir like, but that's different. It's a totally different. You lied to me. You yeah. lied to yeah. me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You lied to me. I thought yeah. you were a good singer. You lied yeah, to me. Would, oh yeah. my I think God. most, I think most people, most people who go into, it, especially in rock bands, most people who go into it start off as bad singers, and you just learn that. <laughs> <laughs> well, especially you know when you're going through puberty, that's that doesn't help either. <laughs> yeah. TMI. 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 Oh man. Are, are, like nothing like dealing with like vocal squeaks and voice cracks when you're trying to sing <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's it's definitely um i i always wanted to just, you know be a performer for sure but um i was like yeah, i'll just be a guitar player Ooh. started to do singing and then um and then i i moved i moved to arizona from colorado because i that's where i was growing up and uh when i moved to arizona um i decided to go a totally different route i uh i I had a girlfriend and so i started writing love songs you know and <laughs> everything changed after that once i started writing love songs so yeah, suddenly, <laughs> suddenly turned into ben Jovi. yeah yeah right, exactly <laughs> exactly exactly like sappy four to four to six chord love songs on the acoustic guitar <laughs> and uh and then uh and, and that's oh, pretty man. much 
everything mm. changed from that point i figured screw it you can't get involved with rock it's so hard to get involved with rock i was like let me try and do the do singer songwriter pop stuff you know that's what i was doing for a while and i was i broadened my my influences i was listening i got really into electronic dance music when i was about 16 years old um like i was into dubstep and all that hardcore stuff that was like the, all the craze right at the time like was, when skrillex was like just coming out on youtube and people were like whoa what is this yeah and all the kids were into that um like was that was in scary monsters and nice sprites and all that kind of stuff was on um and then uh then i got into reggae and maybe that's because of uh <laughs> of, of some other activities i was doing uh, but uh um after that, um, and when I was in when I was in college at seventeen, I was do I was really into funk music and disco music, <laughs> like ridiculously, like yeah, into yeah. funk and disco music for like years. Like that's all I would put on in the house it was like James Brown in Parliament and all this old school like awesome groovy funk stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then uh. In between all that, I was I was a big fan of the '90s grunge. <laughs> um, I always try to like I guess I mean I try to take influences from everywhere. I mean I was even you know I wasn't into his new stuff, but I was like checking out like even Justin Bieber's like more new stuff that, that was happening you know, like you know past few years. I'm like yeah, this is cool. I can dig this. Like I was like good music's good music in my opinion, you know. And it, everyone's yeah, yeah, got yeah. different tastes. You're right, hundred you know? percent. And but that's the cool thing, like if. Um, if you can take as many of those influences as possible and put your songwriting, like that's that's how you that, that's how everybody does. You know, everybody <laughs> steals everything from everybody else, but they just make it their own. They take all their own. They take all their influences, all of their inspirations, and they put it together in something that they feel is is them. You know, because yeah, yeah. you are as an artist, you are the instrument of all your influences. You know, so whatever you are influenced with, that's what you're gonna make. So. It, you know, trying to be open with it as much as possible is, is, yeah. is everything. I agree. I agree. I, I think that the, the, the problem sometimes is that uh, well, the, the problem comes quite often is when you get to, to the music uh, industry where mm -hmm. uh, you get a band becomes popular and they everybody, every record label, every outlet, it wants to have another band that sounds the same as them. Well, so the, the, formulaic, market, yeah. the market gets formula. flooded with the same old stuff. Mm -hmm. And the people who want to play, make different stuff, who want to be original, get kind of left behind. Yeah. And it's harder for them to break through. It, it, it's just wrong. It, it never used to be like that. In the 60s, people were willing to take chances on new, different stuff. You know, and, and it seems to have got to the point now where as soon as a band hot and they're, they're, they're getting hits, everybody wants another one of them to make money from it. Well, yeah, I mean, we, we, Greg and I have had some conversations about that. That's for sure. Um, it can be a, it's kind of funny because like, even you look at like rap music right now, I mean, they all use the same samples even to this day, you know, and it's the same. It really does sound the same. Um, same thing with, with hard rock. I mean, like literally I, I'll put on, you know, Octane on, on Sirius and like, there's a lot of good bands out there, but like, it's, it's the same drum samples over over all the drums like it's, it's the same sounding thing and that's not i mean if it works it works like I, i'm all yeah. about that you know yeah. and that and I, that's obviously for the labels it works i mean if you people even for listeners you know people are gonna go to something that they're familiar with yeah um yeah. that's true it's it's just that we like comfort we're humans we like we like things that we're familiar with we don't yeah. like things that are that are out there and and i mean there's Every band that's been so weird that I've heard, I usually hated at first. I hate, like, I love 21 Pilots. I hated them when I first heard them. <laughs> I hated them. And I was just like, what, what the hell is this? What is this? I didn't, I didn't get it. And um, it's funny because as uh, Trent Reznor had a quote, he said, he's like, my favorite bands are the ones I hate listening to at first. And it's, and it's, it's true. Like, those are the ones like, like, me going, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know oh, about uh, that. Yeah, I, I know exactly what you mean. It's, it's. Um, I think, I think some of it is the fact that uh, you kind of. I think if you grow into music or you grow to like music, it means more to you than your first time. You go, you go, oh, this is really cool. I can dance to this, or this is really good, or whatever. It just then gets 
replaced by something else that's the same sort of thing you know whereas if you grow into something and you kind of go all right you know this is really you know it, it starts to affect you a bit more yeah well you change your own opinion your own perspective is definitely going to be a lot more impactful right yeah you yeah know? yeah so um another one i like to yours that you one that you mentioned earlier which was breakdown um what's i mean what are the uh things that influence you in as far as the songwriting goes and it, like, well, yeah so breakdown actually that was the first song i ever tried writing that was like let me try and throw something heavy with electronic stuff on it and it was like um it ended up uh, sounding a little different, like the demo is a little different sounding for sure. It was all just like really heavy EDM drum, sam drum samples with it. Um, I think what we did with Jeremy Parker sounds uh, a lot more in line with uh, being a more hybrid sound with the drums even. Um, but, uh, you know, with like the, the, with the synths on the riff, like I was just trying to find something that was just really like, it, it just, you could just like, you know, move yeah. to like on a typical four to four kind of thing like you would in a dance song yeah. um yeah. you know similar bpm you know it's like 119 i think that's the bpm for that song so um and you know it's just i, I love how like with the ver the verse is um and just a kick with um that's when i was experimenting with um which i put in a lot of the song is i, I end up finding like this these oversaturated drum samples that i just really messed around with and I would pitch them and I would filter them and I would make them dance somewhat like a shaker in a way, yeah, but, yeah. It's, but, it, but it's really industrial sounding. It's really mean and ugly. And uh, it's a nice little layer to put on over the drums. Um, the, it was just, it was just trying to make some, I don't know what I was doing really. I was just trying to, I found some really <laughs> cool heavy, I found some really cool heavy guitar rift. I milked the shit out of it. And then I just, put so a bunch of stuff around it and then i was like and the words came like it was all written in like a day like i put everything together and it, it was just i was i worked on it for like seven eight hours and i called greg up immediately i'm like dude you got to come and hear this song and and i was just like dude, i'm just messing around with something you want to check this out it's like whoa what is that yeah. no i <laughs> and, think sometimes that sometimes the best stuff comes from uh just sort of uh, experimenting with different sounds and different beats and different things that you kind of that, that and until you hear something that you want want it to be exactly know? and yeah. yeah the good thing nowadays of course is because we don't because you're not using tape you can do things and go no I don't like that and scrap it and do it again you know it's it's so fast yeah it's so fast it's a lot yeah. cheaper it's a lot yeah. cheaper, yeah. cheaper yeah. too yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, if I oh on a laptop yes. in a basement nowadays, right? <laughs> so, Greg, what are your musical influences? Because you, you were saying that the, the band you were playing in was, wasn't a rock band, obviously. Me? Yeah. Me? Yeah, that was actually was a, like, Superbus was a pop rock band, um, a, very heavily influenced by uh, American bands such as No Doubt and and Blink-182 and, and, oh, and, yeah. and all this stuff. It was, was, was completely different than, than what we're doing with Evan. A lot less uh, heavy, uh, a lot less heavy guitars. Um, <clears throat> but it, it was, you know, it was, as I said, it, it was a sort of a hybrid of No Doubt, Blondie, um, Blink 182, you know, all the California oh, punk okay. rock scene. So that, that's why it was with a with a with a girl singing. So often the comparison to, you know, um, no doubt, even the B52 sometimes, you know, yeah. like that. That was, that was so, fun, fun pop rock. So was it is that the sort of music that you uh, were like really into and that you were listening to when you first got into the music thing? No, actually, like I'm, I'm really when it comes to music, I grew up uh, listening to uh, funky music because my dad was playing percussions. Oh. So obviously, he was more into Santana and James Brown and Curtis Mayfield and and Wilson Pickett, all the funk music. Yeah, that's yeah. what my dad was listening, and and my mom, she was always like. Um, she loved, you know, top 40 radios, but she also liked the Beatles. 
So I, 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 I listen to a lot of the Beatles when I, when I grew up as well. Um, and, and yeah, so, you know, I've, I, I forged myself in between those, those worlds. And then as I, as I got closer to 15 or 16, actually, I had already started the drums. Right. Oh, major influence in my life. I grew up, I grew up learning the drums, playing to the Clash tunes. Because my uncle, who's 12 years older than me, uh, I, I, my, I was uh, every day at lunch and after school, I was staying at my grandparents. And my uncle had a drum kit in, uh, my, in his bedroom, right? So I would go sneak out when he wasn't you know, here, sneak out in his bedroom, play his records, and drum of other records. So uh -huh. the, the, my biggest influence as a kid was The Clash, Elvis Costello and The Attraction. I was playing on that when I was like cool. 11 years old. Yeah, yeah, that was very cool. And then I discovered heavier rock, like I discovered Led Zeppelin and all this stuff when I was 15 or 16, really. And then I felt in love with that type of music and, and then that led to grunge music. Then, you know, I was a grunge baby. Yeah. So all of a sudden I got hit by Pearl Jam and Sun Garden and Alice in Chains, obviously Nirvana. Was never a major fan of Nirvana, but all those sort of bands, you know, were to yeah, yeah. me were like, where it's at. Oh, wow. Yeah, that was, that was, that was the cool effect. <laughs> you're you're cut you cut out real quick. It's all good. Though. You're, we we got we got you, Greg. He's, he's gone. He's hey, gone. Oh, is he gone? He's oh, gone. He's, he's gone. He's gone completely. He might be able to come back. Wow, he's wow. He he just got warped up from the mothership. They <laughs> they beamed they beamed him out. Maybe you'll come back. We'll see. <laughs> okay. Um, um, the other song that I was I was really really liked was uh, "What Would You Do." Yeah. Like, what would you do? That's that's re that's really good. A really good song. It's um. All of your stuff is kind of different. If you know what I mean, it's it's mm -hmm. it's like each one of those songs is different from other things I've heard, and also from each other. Yeah. So, yeah. I that that one's probably the heaviest uh one of our heaviest electronic ones like really it's it's just super heavy electronic that one took a lot of influence from the dubstep i used to listen to when i was yeah. you know 16 and you know, i went like with the skrillex and the stuff like that because it's just that was that was insane you know how it was um pretty much i don't know it was like it's like a mixture of um I don't know. I don't, it was, I really liked the one because I wanted something that was just with a stupid heavy drop, something yeah. to have just in a crazy, like, you know, the guitar, the guitar can support the, the electronic on this one. And, yeah. but have like a really intense vocal that, that you would get in, in hard rock, you know, metal music. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the message of the song is literally, you know, uh, um, so you could take it politically, you could take it uh, motivationally, you can take it's 
it's you know a lot of a lot of uh messages you'll find in, in rock music you know we're just like i'm sick and tired of the shit i'm gonna keep you know i'm gonna rebel and do what i want to do and 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 uh and fight and stand up for myself yeah. you know that's a, a lot of elements in rock music have always been that with the message and mm-hmm. um so it was it, I, the funny thing is i actually i wrote it's when I was writing that song, it was that that drop was the first thing I put down on on the pro on um, my interface was that awesome like weird cre- uh, dubstep riff that they, you know that drops for the chorus. Yeah, yeah. And then I wrote everything else around that. I was like, man, this is really cool. I didn't even know if I was really going to be making a song for Penny Billionaires. I was just having fun with it, and but it just it worked. And then you know, typical four on the floor really heavy samples and it was um it's funny because like it, it really reminded me of like you know the closer to god nine inch nail song uh, yeah, yeah. With, with the kick and the snare yeah, yeah. it just and it's it's so like in your face oh, it's it's a good song it's it's it is as you say in your face it's really it, it kind of uh it's i think it's the closest one i would say to being metal yeah 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 it's 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 pretty pretty metal but it's not though at the same time no. it's like <laughs> there's yeah, like there's like three guitar notes you know that just like kind of layer in it it's it's kind of funny it's, it's interesting because there are parts of it that kind of remind me of the kind of industrial sound uh like they, they call uh caius uh, I'm not. I'm not familiar with Caius. Ah, uh, they're, they're, they're really good. It's sort of like industrial metal sort of sound. <laughs> yeah, yeah, which, absolutely. Which doesn't necessarily rely on on guitars so much, more on just sort of like <laughs> just sort of power and depth of sound. Right, <laughs> right. So, like, um, it was funny because I was um, when I was making started making this stuff. Greg was like, "Oh, dude, that one." And it's a different song, but like, he was like, "Wow, dude, it's like." It's like the pro. It's like uh, this one song from the from the Prodigy, and I'm like the who? Oh, <laughs> I'm yeah. like the who? And I'm like he's yeah, like yeah. you don't know the Prodigy? And I'm like no. And I I just was never exposed to the to the pro- like. And I was like oh I get it. Like how like it's I'm like yeah. I almost felt like I was stealing their song <laughs> actually. And I never I've never heard them. You know I was well, like wow that's crazy. Greg, it's coming back in. Awesome. <laughs> it's rejoining. Awesome. We just tell him about how he. Uh, and he showed me the prodigy. <laughs> Hi. Okay. Hey. He's back from the mothership. <laughs> He's Hi. back from the mothership. He got beamed out. Well, so I lost the. When I was going to say something nice and say, yeah, that's why I love Leon. Uh, Leon. What do know? Evan's voice, like the grunge, you know, like because you have that yeah, voice, yeah, yeah. you know, type of voice. We got disconnected. I'm sincerely sorry. I, oh, I didn't okay. realize my phone wasn't charging. No, no. And because iPhones are so great, when you charge your phone, you can put the speakers. And I'm trying to go on the computer on Instagram, and the password is not the password I had stored. So I can't access things. You're like, oh, oh, I think I think I did actually access it. So I may be able to join you guys through the computer and put some <laughs> headphones on uh it's cool oh, so we get two camera angles of greg that'd be great we get two angles what you of say? greg we'll get two camera angles of you so it'll it'll look really yeah it'll look really yeah because because one I like one view of you isn't enough comes to me you know because it's me myself and i yeah. so actually i need three cameras because <laughs> it's me myself and i you know so i need to make sure like the three Gregs, you know, it's Greg and the Jacks, right? So, like, just to make sure. Um, so, okay, so now that I figured that out, <clears throat> I'm gonna be, oh, I need to charge my computer as well. So, you guys keep going, keep talking for a minute. I'm on it, I'll, I'll join you. Keep, keep talking, like, don't worry, okay. About it. Well, don't I'm, I'm, me. I'll be right back. Hey, I'll, I'll, be right yeah, back. I'll remind you to come back, okay? <laughs> yeah, I leave, don't, don't worry about it. I leave, but I'll be back, I'll be back longer. <laughs> All right, all right, Arnold. All right, all right Terminator. <laughs> wow, this is great. This is the most chaotic one I've ever done. <laughs> I love it. Uh, I love it. Um, <laughs> we were we were talking about what would you do, right? You were, saying, you were saying about being introduced to the prodigy. Yeah, yeah, you introduced me to the prodigy, and I probably spent a good like. 
couple weeks just listening to the prodigy um and i started writing as soon as i heard the prodigy i was like okay cool i'm gonna do something like this like this is cool and um uh i think that's where i realized like okay maybe i could go a little bit more electronic with this stuff and then that's um and then what would you do pretty much uh, happened like probably a month or two after that when in, in the writing process um it, like the funny thing about that one is that one was done in like a day too like it just happened all you know all together lyrics everything and the funniest thing is is um there was a whole extra part that was written that song that we took out and i was um like there was this big like build up um and i've kind of i think we'll do it for the live version um when, when we start doing it because it was cool but it just i don't know it, it, it just you felt should... too rushed it was like this um I like I took the influence from um, um, Lincoln Park's Hybrid Theory of um, that song "One Step Closer." Yeah, yeah. And uh, it was like that. Shut up when I'm talking to you. Uh, like really heavy drop. And I was like, I just want to like scream on on the mic and just like have something weird, um, some weird crazy breakdown in it, and then go into that beautiful bridge that's in there. And it it was cool. But we just said, what if we just like threw it for a loop and just just threw the bridge right in right after? Like, what would you do? Just to like like whoa and what is this yeah yeah and it worked it worked actually really well we were sitting there in the studio just throwing parts around like trying to piece the puzzle together like what would we do here i'm like oh this is cool see i mean um, you, can always, you can always re re if you can always reuse it to do something else with it it's sort of like you know, sure. change, yeah change, change the tempo slightly and uh well it's funny because yeah. I, I just wrote a song this week that's that incorporates uh, a really really heavy um like like metal breakdown drop that's just stupid intense and it's it's pretty cool i did a lot of i've been um changing a little bit of the of the tones that i've been using on the other songs so it's I, I, when it comes to writing music like i never really want anything to sound exactly the same there's a lot i have so many songs that i write that i just stop in the middle of writing because i'm like that sounds so much like this song i already have and i just stop you know and and i'll go like okay let's, i'll come back to it fresh again the next day and try something else and and then when it sticks i'm like okay i'm on it i'm like i'm like on it and i'm finishing it up polishing all the buttons and then we bring it into the studio to really uh Great. lay down coming greg is coming back in he's back he's coming he's coming in there he is <laughs> is, is he gonna be on the oh, yeah, is yeah, he gonna yeah. have two angles now no two no, no, no. Um, only one i'm keeping it simple i don't want you know to ever produce the show i don't want to you know hey you look real pretty on, on that on that computer there right you're looking yeah, pretty see, it's a lot nicer yeah it's so let's scratch everything that was said and let's start with that. I look a lot pretty. I, I love <laughs> Anyway, without being said, my apologies. That's fine. That's fine. We were just talking, we were talking about um uh God, I can't remember the name of the song now. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, we're talking about what would you do? What would you do? That was it? Oh yeah. yeah. What would I do? Yep. Yeah, yeah what would you do, Greg? <laughs> me fade away tell me how to behave they tell me just to compromise that it's the only way i don't belong beside myself and placed upon a shelf to stay intoxicated becoming someone Um, so what, what I'm wanting to know is what, what, what's the plans for the future now? Are you, I mean, are you out there playing the stuff live or are you going to be out there playing it live? Oh, we're going to be. Yeah, very, very soon, actually. We're, uh, we're actually going to do a little test run and announce a, a little local show here. Um, 
uh, right after our release of the fourth single. That's uh, we have Take Back Nothing coming out on uh, on uh, the 21st of May. Okay. And uh, that's then we're going to start doing some shows. And we have a bunch of other stuff that isn't out that we're going to be throwing in the shows as well. You know, obviously that's the fun part. When you come out to the live shows, you get to get to yeah. hear all the stuff that's not out yet. Um, yeah, yeah, and come out. We have been um, invited to play a, a very, actually, the, the a very interesting uh, theme. Is the, it's called the I Voted Festival. So it's an online festival. It's actually a pretty big thing. Um, big artists are playing there. Like two years ago, it was Billie Eilish and MGMT. Oh. This year, it's Alice Storm and our Hellstorm, as you guys uh, mentioned. I call it uh, Run the Jewels. A lot of different things, right? A lot of big artists. So that's going to be for November 8th. Oh. It, it, yeah, it's very cool. It's very, it's awesome that we've been added to the roster of that festival. Uh, and it's actually to really uh, um, uh, motivate people to go vote, you know, to, to vote. Because at the end of the day, this is the one tool you have. You're unhappy with what you have. You may not get what you want by voting, but this is one of uh, the first step in a democracy. We have the right to vote. We should use it. Absolutely. So that's yeah, what, what would you do? <laughs> so yeah, what would you do? I would go vote and stop there. Absolutely. So, so yeah, we, we absolutely want to play live. And as Evan said, we're going to have our first real Penny Billionaires show in October. So I think, you know, you know how it is, Andy? Nowadays, um, labels, venues, everybody looks at that as. They don't look back in the days, they would listen to your music and be like, oh, I love what you're doing, let's get you in. Now they look at your data and they're like, oh, how many people can you bring in, you know? So, yeah, yeah. so it's a little more challenging to get in, but now that we start to be on some radars and local radars, local radios, and big radios, but you know, Phoenix, Phoenician radio start playing the song All right. here and there. Like it, it's not in rotation. They really play it like on their, what they call their, you know, home ground, like bands, you know, they have shows for local bands. Yeah, so yeah. they start playing us here and there, which is already great. You know, we can't, we can't, you know how it is, radios and labels and the relationship and the money that's exchanged, we, we, yeah. we, we can't compete. So it's great to have that. So yeah, that's in the works. Yeah. That's cool. Are you, I mean, you, you're building up quite a, a decent sort of following then uh, locally. Well, yeah. I, I, yeah, we're starting. We're starting. I'll tell you, you know, when we play the show in Phoenix, Andy, I'll tell you how big is our following if they're going to really show up, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I was telling, that was funny. I was, uh, as I was coming down, uh, and, and getting ready for the interview. Like I was, I was talking to my wife very briefly and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm late, I have this interview, et cetera, et cetera. And we brief, briefly talked about that show coming on October 10th, Yeah. Oh, no, October 5th, would you excuse me? And yeah. I was like, if we have 50 people in the venue, I would be happy. Uh, That's where I set my bar, 50. And I, well, to, to be honest, I mean, I've, I've played shows to three people. So, you know, yeah. we have more people behind the bar than we had paying to come in. So, you know, just, these <laughs> things happen. <laughs> and yeah, I played a whole tour like that. Uh, I played a <laughs> European tour with a, not my, my, my former big band, but a, a band that I had in between, you know, that was part of in between. And yeah, we did, we did a full European tour showing up with a big tour bus, you know, double decker and everything, you know, and we would get to the new and there would be like zero. Yeah. <laughs> like literally, I remember that show in Berlin where there was no one, like wow. zero. We still played it, the promoter kept the show going and I think we ended up with two people. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, these things have to be done sometimes. I think you have to experience that to understand how you know what life on the road is like really yeah so, so what you play so you play you play as I'm, i mean i'm sorry i'm curious but, no 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 I, I used to sing in bands oh really yeah yeah i haven't what done it for, i haven't done it for a while and i've kind of uh, got to an age now where i think i'm gonna 
I'm probably not going to be doing it again. So <laughs> it's just, uh, you know. Well, can we listen to some stuff somewhere? Are you guys Spotify? Uh, or? I don't know if there's any of our stuff online. We 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 were well before. I mean, God, I we had. I, last time I think we put stuff online, it was on MySpace. That's, oh, okay. How many years ago was that? <laughs> that? That good on Tom. That's yeah. Tom, right? I heard Tom, right? Yeah. Tom, so, first of all. Yeah, dude, Tom was my friend too, man. Yeah, he was my friend too. <laughs> yeah. So, are you, uh, have you got more material that you're working on or that you're... You, Got ready to record, or what's going on with that sort of thing? If yeah, I may, so that's the idea. Go ahead, Evan. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so we're we're, we're basically um we're going to be going back in the studio right now and recording our, our next song that's coming out after this one. We're going to be doing that here in a couple of weeks. Um, right now we're we're sitting on a bunch. We're just trying to like really, it's just like pick one. Like, okay, what's the what's the theme we want to put out for this this time for the next time and the next time? Because yeah, yeah. we we have we have softer songs. Um, we have heavier songs <laughs> we have so it's like which way do we want to go yeah, um yeah. you know some that definitely could be a lot more radio friendly <laughs> and uh you know for instance but uh you know at the end of the day there's also ones that are just really fun to do live and so and other ones that make a really good statement like the like we we strategically chose the first three because we wanted to make a statement we were like okay here you know you want it this is where we can go with our sound right. um and uh, we still have a couple more really big blanket statements to make, I think, with our music. Um, before, like, a real album, I would say, is going to okay. start coming out. I was um, going to say, so you're gonna, you've got a few more singles that you're going to put out, then maybe do an album. That's maybe. what I wanted to... Hello. That's what I wanted yeah. to say. The strategy, in fact, behind the project, because we started from scratch, and the, in October of last year, nobody had heard about Penny Billionaire. Yeah, yeah. We had maybe two fans on Instagram. One must have been my mom and the other one Evan's <laughs> mom. All right. So, so part of also what we have been doing is, you know, we're releasing one song after another to build at the same time. Because as you know, it's all about data. So we're going to be, uh, at least to me, as I look at the situation, six, seven, eight, nine more months, we're going to keep building and releasing song hopefully there was a major gap this time between what would you do and the next single it should have never been that wide of a gap because we had the song we were prepared he comes with the distributor all this stuff i didn't help but the plan with evan is to release a song roughly every six weeks to yeah. keep building the fan base and and you know keep getting people around us and then once that is done and you get to a decent number it's tried to get a deal to fund an album. So will yeah, it be yeah. with some of the songs we already record? Possibly, but I still believe that's what I tell Evan all the time. Yeah, always yeah. look in the future, always write new material. You know, like Absolutely, always yeah. write new material and 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 come up because the we haven't you know the I don't think we have written the best song yet. And and I always believe whatever Ben I was in, the, the best song is yet to come. You know, yeah, yeah. so that that's sort of our plan. It's it's a very it's simple at the end of the day. It's releasing a song every six weeks, and now, as Evan mentioned, incorporating some elements, and now it's going to be the live elements to show another dimension or side of the band. Because so far, people have been only seeing like videos. They've been and, listening and to music recordings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. And and like. Because Greg and I have been performing together as musicians and friends for years, and that we we know we have amazing chemistry on stage. I mean, we do. We also play in. in um, uh, we also play as a cover band. We have yeah. been doing that over over the years, and and we put a hell of a show on. Um, we really do, and it's and like God, it just it's going to feel so nice when we um, when we do the originals because. We, yeah. when we do our cover band stuff, we like to do all the heavy music as well too, you know, like Linkin Park and things like that. So, I mean, like we're, you know, Greg, Greg hits the shit out of those drums. If you've ever seen one of the videos of him playing in Superbus, you'll know what I'm talking about. He's insane. He's a I'll monster. I haven't actually. And it, it's the two of us again, by the way. Yeah, it's and just he... two of us. It's the cover band. It's two of us. It's... Yeah, we yeah, try yeah. to play with other cool. people. 
you know, Andy, we try to play with other people and we have great respect for the people that come and play with us, great musician, but we're like, they get on the way. Yeah. Like, not because we wanna, but we have such a chemistry yeah, that yeah. it's like anybody, they sort of find themselves in the middle, you know, it's like, so yeah, it's- uh, Exactly, okay. that's, that's the best way you can put it, yeah. That's cool. Well, I'm, I'm really glad to hear you're gonna be doing new stuff and getting out there and playing. Hopefully you can come over to, the UK sometime that'd be really cool because I, I can't wait Andy like. Andy the UK have been um very we got a fantastic response from the UK because as you know um, that as yes they suck but they also are very interesting you know because you know who your fans are or who the people that listen to your music who enjoy your music and demographically talking you see where they are and we have had a lot of online support like Wingam Radio uh, uh, has been extremely supportive of Penny Billionaires and I want to I want to majorly thank them for being one of the first e-radios to play our music right mm. those guys have been stellar and 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 we see that a lot of people I believe London is our uh, I can't remember if it's London or the UK so don't get me wrong I know those are two different things remember I'm European well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but um, we got. We see that it's in the top five of the most either listeners or the most uh, played. Uh, we we got so yes, oh, and, yeah. and you know I, I was born and raised in Paris, so just across the channel. I can't wait to come and play in the UK. I no, I, I be, can't tell you. That would be great. I'd love to. Oh. I'd love to come and see you guys live uh, to see what it's like listening. Where live. are you, Andy, in the UK exactly? I'm uh, just. I'm on the eastern outskirts of London. Oh, okay. So you you are next to you're not far from London, like no, no. right in this area. Okay, excellent. Yeah. yeah. So you must see some good shows as well in London. You know? Well, I try to get into them as much as I can. Yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. Well, thank you for being on the show. It's been really great talking to you. It's been chaotic but fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My apologies. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, it's it's fine. Fun. Um, I wish you all the best with the uh, latest single. When's the new single coming out? Twenty. It's uh, coming out on uh, May twenty first. May twenty first, and the uh, gig in October is on the fifth. Yeah. Uh, the, the 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 our first headlining gig. Yeah. It's gonna be on October fifth, and the Ivory Festival, which is online, gonna be broadcasted on November eighth. Okay. Well, Election okay. day. Thank you, guys. Uh, to everybody out there who's been watching, um, pay attention to what's been going, what's going on, and listen to Penny Billionaires. Check out their music. I'll put links up as I always do to their YouTube channel and the uh, social media. Check them out. Keep an eye out for live gigs or for new material, uh, and I think you'll uh, you'll be happy that you did. Um, thank you very much, guys. It's been great talking to you. It really has. Uh, so everybody watching, thank you very much. I'll see you again. Bye. Thanks, mate. Anytime. Thanks, Anytime. Andy. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Andy. Talking music with Big Andy. Oh.